Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, it is Short Story Tuesday, so I wanted to talk about a short story from Russia, of all places, one that is about a huntsman and a neglected wife. I am referring to The Huntsman by Anton Chekhov. For those who don't know, and I think that would include me, but I do, I, I do think a lot of people have heard of uh, Chekhov in the past, uh, simply because he was very prolific, even if they might not have read his work. That, that includes me. I'm, I'm very familiar with the name. I haven't read uh, anything that he's written. But for those who don't know, Anton Chekhov was a writer and also a physician in the 1800s uh, living in Russia. He is extremely, uh, again, extremely prolific. Um, I read that he, he wrote over 400 short stories and, and books and, and stuff like that, which is, which is quite a bit, especially given that he only lived about uh, 44 years of his life. Uh, which is, you know, a lot of time, or not, not a lot of time to write so much work. Uh, in addition, um, you know, he was a physician, and he was also sick most of his life, uh, having hemorrhaged lungs and dying of ter tuberculosis and uh, just going through an awful lot in his life. So in between, like, all of that, he found the time to, to write a lot of short stories and, and books, which I think is kind of impressive. Uh, so yeah, uh, he... Uh, he's one of the, the big Russian names of, of lit literature, along with Tolstoy and Dostoevsky. Uh, so I thought I, I would check, his, check out his work. Uh, this, this particular story comes from 1885, so uh, around when he, was, when he first started uh, getting his work published. So this is some of his early work. Uh, so without further ado, let's talk about The Huntsman. I'll do a little summary, a little analysis, and we will move on from there. So the Huntsman focuses on, uh, primarily focuses on Jaeger. Uh, Jaeger, uh, he's a, a Huntsman, of course. He's walking through the wilderness, just enjoying his surroundings, when he hears someone call his name. He turns around and discovers that it is Pelagia, uh, who uh, begins asking questions about where he is and why he hasn't visited her in quite some time. Uh, and Jaeger goes on about how he's not meant for the uh, the village life and how the last time he visited her, he smacked her and surely he doesn't want that to happen again. And, and yada, 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 yada. He just, he just gives a whole bunch of excuses. And at first it just seems like this is someone who he doesn't want to be around. Uh, but eventually it's revealed Pelagia even says, you're my husband, why aren't you visiting me? So it's established that these two have a bit of a, a relationship, a marriage even going although uh, Yegor doesn't really want to be in that relationship. Yeah, Ye uh, it's, it's revealed that Ye uh, they're married and that Yegor never visits. Uh, he, he claims that he loves um, being a wilderness man and you wouldn't force an actor to be anything but an actor, uh, which I think is a very Anton Chekhov kind of line, given that he wrote so much for, for the theater. But uh, he, he just exclaims that he, he didn't really want to be married to her in the first place, and, and they're better off this way. Uh, he asks uh, um, Pelagia where she's getting her money from, if it's not coming from him, and she says that uh, the state is paying her like one ruble, I, I don't know how much that is, uh, for uh, to... Uh, uh, bottle feed children for, for the state. So uh, uh, a little bit making some money, but clearly she's she's not exactly uh, um, successful with, with him uh, attempting to ditch her. Uh, he also reveals that he's seeing other women too, and this kind of makes um, uh, Pelagia sad. And Diego is like, "Don't cry over over me, you know. I I I'm not. I'm probably not worth the tears or something like that." And uh, yeah, Pelagia is in fact sad. She she asks for him to come back and and do uh, his responsibility since they got married and actually be a husband. Uh, and Yegor, um, for his part, ends up giving her some money before he leaves, uh, 
kind of indicating that he does have a responsibility towards her. And then, again, he, he decides to leave. And the story ends with Pelagia just watching him um, walk away into the wilderness and disappearing in the horizon. So in terms of analysis, there's a bit to talk about here. One of the first things I noticed with this story was that uh, Anton touches upon the idea that men are wild at heart and yada, yada, yada. I really don't care much for that theme when it pops up. I don't think it's very creative. Like, even if it was one of the first stories published, it's not very creative. And so, uh, uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, I'll just skip that for now. But another idea that pops up is that of the inner identity. How you can't uh, uh, just change who you are, who what your innermost being is, uh, that you're that we all have what we what we are inside, and uh, and we have to live that life to the best of our to the best of our ability. Uh, Jaeger says that he's an outdoors man. He's a he's a huntsman at heart, and going back and living with Pelagia in the village, it wouldn't be fun for him. It wouldn't it wouldn't be the life that he wants, and he he feels much better amongst the animals and the dogs and, and his hunting gear. Uh, he makes he makes a small amount of money, but it's it's it, it makes him happy, and so this. Is the life that he would rather live. Uh, there's an interesting quote where he talks about how you cannot change who you are at heart. You think of me as a foolish man, gone to the bad, but to anyone who understands, I am the best shot there is in the whole district. The gentry feel that, and they have printed things about me in a magazine. There isn't a man to be compared with me as a sportsman, and it is not because I am pampered and proud that I look down upon your village work. For my childhood, you know I have never had any calling apart from guns and dogs. If they took away my gun, I used to go out with a fishing hook. If they took the hook, I caught things with my hands. And I went in for horse dealing, too. I used to go to the fairs when I had the money, and you know that if a peasant goes in for being a sportsman or a horse dealer, it's goodbye to the plow. Once the spirit of freedom has taken a man, you will never root it out of him. In the same way, if a gentleman goes in for being an actor or any other art, he will never make an official or a landowner. You are a woman, and you do not understand, but one must understand that. And I think what um, what Chekhov is getting at there is, is that uh, once you once you set your heart on something, once you find out who you are meant to be, there's no changing your mind about that. Uh, also, talking a little bit about freedom, like if you if you you don't want to be a, a plowist and you end up taking up another job that's a freedom that doesn't want you to be a farmer anymore like you don't want that for your life anymore um he does say that like oh as a woman you don't understand but but Pelagia says I understand Yegor Vlasovich so like she um she gets that he that he's a huntsman at heart but uh, he thinks that she doesn't understand, and like um, I think it's just a um, an excuse for like, oh, why does why does he keep uh, ditching me? And he comes up with this excuse, and she's like, I understand. Like, if you want to be a huntsman and be married to me, we can we can find a way to make that work. But um, I think that leads me into my next point uh, with Pelagia's reveal that they're married, uh, and. It really seems like that Yegor, um, Yegor is making excuses for being a, a bad provider in this situation. Like, oh, why don't you, why don't you come back home? And he's like, oh, I'm a bad drunk. I'll only be drunk there, and and uh, I'll I'll abuse you, and you, that wouldn't be fun. Or I'm a huntsman, and I'm I'm native to the wilderness. And it really seems like like this is uh, that Pelagia is in the right in this story. Like, it, of course, it, it could be the opposite that um, Chekhov is siding with with uh, Yegor here, but it's, it's really hard not to identify and feel, feel empathy for Pelagia, yet another man refusing to accept his responsibilities of, as, after getting married and ditching the, ditching the woman that he, um, that he wanted to get married to. Uh, it's, it's, um, it seems like that's that's the the crux of the story. Like you're supposed to identify with Pelagia, but given that this was the you know the 1800s, it's it's difficult to tell where um, Anton uh, Chekhov is is really siding here. But I think that's where Death of Author comes in, and like how he might have intended to illustrate man's freedom or something like that. But he ends up just showing how uh, you know, like years later how Pelagia is is a, a neglected wife um, who deserves much better. And Jaeger makes a bunch of weird excuses too. Like he doesn't have to drink when he's around Pelagia. Like he chooses to do that. He also says, uh, he kind of turns it around on her and says, oh, you're not a serf. You didn't have to get married to me. And if that's the case, like 
Yegor could have, uh, Yegor said he was drunk when he married her, which, you know, I already have my doubts, but there's the fact that, uh, that Yegor, like, he could have gotten the marriage annulled or something like that. Maybe there was something to do with the law or religion in Russia at the time that made, that would have made divorce difficult, but they, they could have separated or, or like found a way to, to break off the marriage, but Yegor doesn't want to do that. He doesn't seem to point in that direction he, he places all the blame on Pelagia and uh the the weird count guy who uh who apparently didn't like him and and, and forced him to get to Pelagia but these are these are um just excuses and, and and victim blaming in this case and he he seems like a real you know turd for for behaving like this and I do have to wonder how many times has this conversation happened how many times has Pelagia stopped uh Yegor in the wilderness how many times has she said you know you have a responsibility to me because he keeps coming back home like um he does this from time to time and so it's, it's like he's accepting responsibility and the biggest indicator of that is that uh Yegor uh gave her money at the end of the story like it's him acknowledging that he has some duty to this woman as his wife and yet at the same time, he refuses to accept that responsibility, and so he comes off as a bit of a, a bit of a hypocrite. I think, like saying, "Oh, I'm a man of the of the woods, but also here's some money. I don't want to accept blame for being a terrible husband. So, you know, just just take the money and go." And I I really don't think uh, Pelagia is in the wrong here. I think it's it's pretty clear that uh, that Yegor is a is a jerk. And uh, maybe that Chekhov is kind of parodying, parodying those those men who are like I'm a I'm a free spirit or whatnot. Another thing I really like about this story is Chekhov's vivid imagery and his writing style. It's it's very straightforward and to the point. But Chekhov finds the time to to describe the the beautiful scenery and he really makes these characters. Uh, pop out uh, like like uh, Yegor seems like a real human and a real jerk and Pelagia seems like you know um, a real th three-dimensional character like she's really mad at Yegor for, for abandoning her but she also still fawns over him which I, I find fascinating there's a there's a really interesting uh, passage in the beginning I'd like to quote at the edge of a clearing, a tall, narrow-shouldered man of 40 in a red shirt and patched trousers that had been a gentleman's and in high boots was slouching along with a lazy, shambling step. He was sauntering along the road. On the right was the green of the clearing. On the left, a golden sea of ripe rye stretched to the very horizon. He was red and perspiring, a white cap with a straight jockey peak, evidently a gift from some open-handed young gentleman, perched jauntily on his handsome flaxen head. Across his shoulder hung a game bag with a black cock lying in it. The man held a double-barreled gun cocked in his hand and screwed up his eyes in the direction of his lean old dog, who was running on ahead sniffing the bushes. There was a stillness all around, not a sound. Everything living was hiding away from the heat. And I think that's a really great description that, that allows you to, to be in that scene, a very hot day. Um, uh, some beautiful uh, rye on the side, and, and um, the Yegor and his dog just walking down, um, evidently looking somewhat like a gentleman, looking pre wearing pretty fancy clothes uh, for a man who claims to be living, you know, in the in the wilds. So um, a, a pretty great writing on Chekhov's part, in my opinion. Anyway, those are my thoughts on The Huntsman by Anton Chekhov, a pretty wonderful short story, and what I consider to be a pretty great introduction to Anton Chekhov. I would like to check out more of his short stories before I move on to his books, just so I can get a feel for his writing style and what to expect from uh, from Anton Chekhov, because uh, I'm sure his, uh, his longer form books will be a, a bit more complex and might require a bit more thought, so I should get used to his writing first. I do recommend this to you out there. Uh, it's it's a pretty great short story, and I'm going to link to it in the comments um, or in the description. Uh, make sure you uh, you read it and tell me what you think about Pelagia and and uh, and Yegor. Do you side with Pelagia or do you side with Yegor? I, I'd be interested in getting your side of things. Maybe I'm I'm missing something and, and what, based on my siding with Pelagia. Uh, anyways, um, again, don't forget to comment. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so other people can find out about Anton. Ch Chekhov's beautiful short story here. And in the meantime, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and irresponsible travels. Farewell.